นโมตัสสะบะโวดโอะระหะโดสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะนโมตัสสะบะโวดโออะระหะโดสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะสาดุสาดุสาVipassana is a, a compound word. <clears throat> the first word is a V. The second is the Pasana. <clears throat> When Pasana is analyzed. <clears throat> According to the grammar, Pali grammar, the root of a pasna is this. Sana is a suffix. This means. See or know or penetrate. <clears throat> When the suffix pasna is combined with the word the root dis, then dis becomes a pas. Then it becomes a pasna. <clears throat> Then pasna means that. Seeing, knowing, penetrating. <clears throat> When we use the word pasna, seeing is not ordinary seeing. Seeing into it. So penetrating into the true nature of a dharma. That's the pasna. <clears throat> We means a various. Yeah, various means various characteristics. Even though here <clears throat> the word various is used. It refers to only three characteristics. That's anicca, dukkha, and anatta. So here we means anicca, dukkha, anatta, impermanence, suffering, impersonal nature, or no soul, no self nature. <coughs> So when the two words 
combined, it becomes a vipassana. Then it means uh, seeing into or uh, penetrating into the, the three characteristics of uh, mental and physical phenomena. And now another word, vipassana means uh, seeing into or uh, penetrating into the three characteristics, uh, into the impermanent suffering, impersonal nature of uh, body-mind process. So when you, uh, that's why the Pali scholars translate vipassana into insight. Seeing in two. So Vipassana is a translated to insight because the insight knowledge penetrates into the three characteristics, namely impermanence, suffering, and impersonal nature of a mental and physical phenomena. <coughs> Then when you develop, when you develop this vipassana, it means uh, you try to develop the insight knowledge that penetrates into anicca, dukkha, anatta, empowerment, suffering, and impersonal nature of uh, mental and physical phenomena. Then you come to realize what is the purpose of a vipassana meditation. Do you understand what is the purpose of a vipassana meditation? What is the purpose of the development of a vipassana meditation? Vipassana means insight that penetrates into impermanence, suffering, Impersonal nature of a mental and physical phenomena. Then, what is the purpose of a vipassana meditation? What is the purpose of the development of a vipassana meditation? Hmm? To, to what? <clears throat> to purify the mind defilements. <clears throat> Vipassana means the insight that penetrates into the true nature of uh, impermanence, uh, suffering, impersonal nature of uh, mental and physical phenomena. If you have realized the, the impermanency of uh, any mental process, a physical process, you identify that process with a person, a being, an I or a you. Do you identify it? Do you regard this process, which is a impermanent, as a person, a being? Hmm? 
No, because uh, what we call a person is a we take everlasting since <coughs> we were born on what this person has never died. Huh? This person has never disappeared. It's everlasting until now, at least. <laughs> huh? Then, <coughs> because it's a <coughs> permanent, we regard it as permanent, so we regard it as a person. When we have realized the impermanency of uh, mental process and physical process, do we regard this uh, dual process of uh, mentality and physicality as a person, a being? No. Why? Because this uh, process is uh, impermanent. What we take for a person, a being, is an everlasting one. From the time we were born, we are everlasting. We have never died until now. Huh? That's why we take this embodiment process as a person, a being. And I know you. If we have realized this embodiment process as just a natural process of uh, arising in person way or impermanent nature, do we regard this mind embodiment process as a person, a being? No. Why? because we realize it's an impermanency. Eh? It arises and then passes away, so it's impermanent. So it's a, neither a person nor a being, neither a man nor a woman. Why? Because it's not permanent. It's a subject to impermanence. <coughs> Then, if we take this embodiment process for a person, a being, then we have the idea of a personality, individuality. Then that person has a desire to be rich. Is it right? He yeah. has. That person has a desire to be a president. Is it right? Hmm. That person has a desire to be pretty. Huh? <laughs> yes. That person is uh, angry with someone who consult, insult him. This anger, desire, arises, arises depending on the idea of a, a person, a being. Is it right? Yes. So the idea of a, a person, a being, is the cause of a arising of a right desire and anger. Is it right? So, desire and anger are two mental states of uh, all mental defilements. They are included in all mental defilements. Is it right? Because if you have desire, your mind get defiled. If you have anger, you, your mind defiled with the anger. So they are defilements, mental defilement, klesas, klesas and pali. This mental defilement beginning with anger, 
and uh, desire arise dependent on the idea of uh, a person a being. Is it right? Yes. If there is uh, no idea of uh, a person a being, there won't arise any defilement at all. Is it right? Yes. When we have realized the impermanency of uh, mental process and physical process, do we regard this, this dual process as a person, a being? Huh? No, because they are impermanent. What we consider a person, a being, is everlasting entity. But here, none of our mental process or physical process is everlasting. They are subject to impermanence. We rightly, we have rightly understood it through our personal experience by means of a mindfulness meditation. Then there is no person, no being. Neither mental process is a, a, a person, nor physical process is a, a being. Is it right? Why? Because these dual processes are impermanent, arising in the very instantly passing away. <coughs> Then, I'll go to the, the word vipassana. Vipassana means the insight that penetrates into the impermanence, suffering and impersonal nature of uh, mental and physical process. Do you remember <coughs> what does vipassana mean? Vipassana means vipassana means the insight that penetrates into impermanence, suffering, impersonal nature of a body mind process. If we have realized these three characteristics of a bodily and mental phenomena, do we take this dual process to be a person, a being? Eh? No. Then, when we don't have any idea of a person, a person, a being, Shall we have mental defilement with us? No. Because mental defilement arises depending on the idea of a, a person, a being. Now this dual process of a mental and physical phenomena is a impermanence, so they are neither a person nor being. <coughs> Neither, neither saw a self. Then, when we have no idea of a, a person, a being, through realization of a impermanent suffering, impersonal nature of a body mind process by means of a meditation, vipassana meditation, can we have any of a mental defilements? No because there is no idea of a person being. Then mental defilement is destroyed. Is that? Yes. When mental defilements are destroyed, <coughs> are there any suffering at all? No. 
then what is the purpose of a vipassana meditation? Huh? Yes. <clears throat> to eliminate the su- the suffering through realization of or through insight knowledge that penetrates into the impermanent suffering, impersonal nature of bodily and mental phenomena. Bhavipasana meditation to eliminate suffering through realization or through right understanding or through the insight knowledge. But actually, insight knowledge is not enough to destroy the root of all defilement. You have to attain path knowledge also. Maga jnana. Then to cover up the sense episodes of two jnana, maga jnana and vipassana jnana, we use the word of realization. Through realization of uh, three characteristics of a mental and physical phenomena. Is it so? What are three characteristics of a mental and physical phenomena? Impermanence, suffering, and then impersonal nature. Hmm. Then let me ask you a question. New. What does the word vipassana mean? <laughs> what does the word vipassana mean? Very old one. Eh? Insight knowledge that penetrates into impermanent suffering and impersonal nature of a body mind process. You remember? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I explain the word vipassana, the meaning of the word vipassana, because <clears throat> I would like you to rightly understand the purpose of a vipassana meditation. And now I think you have understood. Huh? Then what is the purpose of a vipassana meditation? <laughs> Elimination of a suffering through realization of a impermanent suffering impersonal nature of uh, body member process. <laughs> no? Yes. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> to eliminate suffering, what you need is uh, to destroy all mental defilements. Is it right? Yes. Then, to destroy all mental defilement, what do you need? (laughs) 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 Yes. (laughs) I'll go down step and step. No, go up. (laughs) Yes. To eliminate all defilements, you need to destroy the idea of a, a person, a being. Hmm? Yes. Because 
the defilements arise dependent on the idea of a, a person a being a nine or a you. Is it right? So if you want to eliminate mental defilements, what you need is eh, to destroy the idea of what a person a being. We call it Sakkaya Deti Atta Deti. The idea of a person a being is known as Sakkaya Deti and Atta Deti in Pali. <coughs> then, to destroy this idea of a, a person a being, what do you need? What do you need to do? Hmm? Make a balance? To realize the uh, impermanency of a body mind process or realize, to realize the three characteristics impermanent suffering and impersonal nature of a body mind process. In another word, to destroy this idea of a person a being, you need to rightly understand the true nature of a body mind process. Is it right? Yes. Here the true nature means the three characteristics. <clears throat> you need to rightly understand the true nature of a body mind process. Here Rightly understanding is known as Sama Deity. Sama, right, Deity, seeing, understanding. View. Sama Deity, right understanding, right view, right seeing. <clears throat> this is Sama Deity, right understanding is uh, one of uh, the eight mental factors of a noble path. You follow? This is Sama Deity, right understanding is one of the eight factors of a noble path. Magasatya. <clears throat> then, to rightly understand the true nature of a body mind process or to realize the impermanence, suffering and impersonal nature of a body mind process, what do you need to do? What do you need to do? Where do you find these three characteristics? In the sky, or in the heaven, or in hell, where do you find these three characters? Mm -hmm. And in the mind body, mind body, yes. In the mental process and physical process, you find these three characteristics: impermanence, and suffering, and impersonal nature. Then. When you want to rightly understand these three characteristics, what should you do? Huh? You should make effort to to be mindful of what? Body mind process. <clears throat> Why should we be mindful of a body mind process? Because we want to rightly understand three characteristics of a body mind process. Is it right? Then, when we want to Rightly understand these three characteristics of body mind process, what should we do? 
to be mind to love first body mind process how how should we be mindful of yes <clears throat> if we realize or rightly understand the impermanent thing as impermanence is it a right view or wrong view eh huh? right view if we realize impermanence impermanent thing as impermanence it's a right view right understanding why because we realize it or we see it as it is what does right understanding mean right understanding means understanding something as it is is it right yes right understanding means understanding something as it is then another word to see things as they really are is right understanding is it right yes then <clears throat> if we want to see mental process and physical process as they really are how should we be mindful of them this how is very much important how should we be mindful of them or how should we observe them how should we see them how should we be aware of them eh yes that by knowing how should we note them you see some of the buddhist <coughs> are mindful of uh, this uh, mental process and physical process uh, but uh, they combine their pre conception about uh, these uh, three characteristics and uh, noting anicca dukkha anatta rupa anicca dukkha anatta physical process impermanent suffering and no soul no self vedana anicca dukkha ananda feeling is impermanent suffering no soul no self nature sanya perception is anicca dukkha ananda no soul no self nature sankara mental formations are impermanent suffering impermanent nature no soul no self then consciousness vijnana kanna consciousness is impermanent suffering no soul no self nature in this way they are mindful of uh, these uh, five aggregates of a uh, mental and physical phenomena that should we do in that way should we see mental process and physical process in that way Huh? No. Why? Because we want to see it as it is. Huh? We want to see mental process as it is. We want to see physical process as it is. Then what should we do? We should be mindful of mental process and physical process as they really are this is a harm the meaning of harm as they really are as it is this is the meaning of a harm this meaning 
described by the Buddha, by the word Yatha Buddha in Pali. Yatha Buddha means as it is, as it is. The Buddha said, Rupam Bhikkhuvi Yatha Buddha Samapinyaya Dattava. <clears throat> you are not, you are not true too. Huh? No? Oh, why? Yes. Rupam here means physical phenomena or physical process, uh, material phenomena, material process. But some of the Pali scholars translate it into form. Rupa is translated into form. It's not not very good. Rupa is a material phenomena or material process. <coughs> Rupa and Bekwe. Bekwe means that oh, Bekus. <coughs> Yatha Buddha, as it is, as it is, Samapanyaya, with right understanding, Dachabha realizes or understood. So the whole sentence is known as you must realize material process as it really is. That's what it means. To see, to realize this material process as it is, you must be mindful of it as it is. You follow? That's why we have to be mindful of when the pain comes, arises pain, pain. We see it as it is. We do not drive it away. Do you want to drive it away? Yes. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Aversion to the pain. Yes, sometimes you have aversion to the pain. Sometimes you have uh, attachment to the pain. Yes, you see, in Burma, some of the meditators, especially female meditators, <coughs> about say, one month after one month's meditation, they have been no pain at all. Then <clears throat> they are not able to observe any mental process, or physical process, attentively. So they want to be attentive. <clears throat> then what do they? They look for pain <clears throat> because if they have the pain. They are very much satisfied because they are able to note it very attentively. Yeah. Then to to find it, <coughs> they sit. They are two legs underneath their body, folding the two legs and underneath their body. Then they are feeling calm. <coughs> their friend come. Who is it, the friend? Pain. <coughs> yes, they are looking for friends. In this way, they can help their friend. They are satisfied with it. Then, note it very attentively. They are attached to pain. That's why I said, sometimes you have a aversion to the pain, sometimes you are attached to the pain. But <clears throat> in this retreat, none of the meditators 
None of Merida is attached to the pain. Huh? Yes. But pain, pain is the key of the door to Nibbana. Pain is the key, do, the key of the door to Nibbana. That's why the Bhamsa meditators look for it. They, they are looking for the key to open the door of Nibbana. <coughs> so, how can the pain be the key to the door of Nibbana? When you have pain, you observe it very attentively, persistently, by being patient with it. <clears throat> the pain becomes severer, you think. Actually, it's not severer. The more your mind is concentrated on the pain, The more clearly the mind knows it, the more clearly the mind know, knows its uh, characteristic. What is the characteristic of the pain? This is uh, unpleasantness. Unpleasant feeling of uh, the pain <coughs> is uh, perceived more and more by the mind when the concentration becomes uh, deeper and deeper. Then, you think the pain becomes severer. Actually, the pain doesn't become severer, but the knowing becomes more, the, the knowing becomes clearer and sharper, penet more penetrating. So you think the pain becomes severer. But you a very perseverant meditator. So, you observe the pain more and more. Then, when the mind's more and more concentrated, becomes more and more concentrated, and more deeply concentrated, then the mind penetrates into the center of the pain. Then it knows the pain is the nature of our unpleasant feeling. If you come to realize the characteristic of the pain very clearly, <coughs> you do not identify the pain with yourself. Before you have realized the characteristic of the pain very clearly and penetratingly. You think my leg is a very much painful, my back is a very much painful. They are, they are my, I, a person. Pain is identified as a person. But when the pain, <coughs> when the deeper concentration, the mind penetrates into the center of the pain. Then you come to realize the pain is an unpleasant feeling of uh, the natural process. It's a neither a person nor a being. Then you do not identify the pain with yourself. <coughs> You do not take pain to be a person, a being, and I know, a you. Then you are not affected by the pain. You are happy with the pain because you realize it. Then when concentration becomes much more deeper, then the pain that the mind come to realize the pain as 
the one layers of the pain, one waves of the pain arises and then goes away. Then another waves of the pain comes and goes away. Then another pet waves of the pain that goes away, comes and goes away. In this way, you come to realize the pain is not permanent. Many waves of pain comes and goes, comes and goes. Those they are impermanent. Then you do not identify it with yourself. Then you do not have any aversion to it. You are not angry with it. Our meditators very easily get angry with the pain because <clears throat> they have not yet rightly understood the true nature of the pain or the, the specific characteristic and general characteristic of the pain. Then the Buddha said, what's the impermanence is the suffering. What's the suffering is not, um, uh, suffering is the impersonal nature. So when you see the impermanency of the pain, arising and passing away, coming and going, then you see it as a suffering. Then you see it as an impersonal nature. This is the nature of a, uh, feeling or sensation. It's a neither a person nor a being. Because uh, you have realized that these are three characteristics of a painful sensation, then <clears throat> you don't have uh, any mental defilement uh, at that moment. You are neither happy nor unhappy with the pain. You have been no desire to be attached to it. You have been no ill will against the pain because the pain is the pain doesn't affect you because you do not identify the pain with yourself. And in other words, because you do not take it to be a person, a being, then there won't arise any defilement at all at that moment. Then the defilement has been destroyed. When the defilement has been destroyed, what do, do we, what do you achieve? The cessation of a suffering, nibbana at that moment. <coughs> <clears throat> Is there any suffering in Nibbana? No. There is no, no suffering at all in Nibbana. Then, when you have been destroying the defilements, all defilements, by realizing the impermanent suffering and impersonal nature of the painful sensation, then you have reached the state of the cessation of suffering. Is it right? Then the pain is the key to the door of Nibbana. Eh? Eh? Yes. Nibbana is a neither mental process nor physical process. So it's a permanent. If Nibbana is a mental process, it's no permanent. If Nibbana is a physical process, it's a not permanent. Then, the cessation of a suffering means uh, the cessation of all mental and physical process. Then, <clears throat> is there any mentality or physicality in Nibbana? No. Then is nirvana permanent or impermanent? Permanent. <coughs> eh? Make a better? No, you see, 
the cessation of all mental and physical process can be attained in this existence. In this existence. So, Nirvana cannot be found out after death. Yes, there is no life in the world. You think there is a life which is everlasting in you. No. Your body, so-called Sakaing, is composed of a bodily and mental phenomena. Bodily phenomena is also impermanent. Mental phenomena is also impermanent. Then is there anything everlasting? No. <laughs> yes. When you <coughs> today mind talks went astray. <laughs> yes, I'll continue. <laughs> Nibbana, the cessation of a suffering, can be attained only after death. You need not develop, you need not practice your vipassana meditation. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so, this is cessation of a suffering, Nibbana, can be attained through rightly understanding of a mental and physical phenomenon and their true nature in this existence. So, <clears throat> it's attainable in this existence if you put enough effort in your practice and uh, devote enough time for your meditation. <clears throat> so, The aim of our Vipassana meditation is to attain the cessation of our suffering through rightly understanding of mental and physical phenomena as they really are. That is why we have to observe any mental process or physical process as they really are. In another, another word, there is no room in mindfulness and meditation or vipassana meditation for preconception, for reasoning, for thinking about, for intellectual, uh, logical. Uh, philosophical thinking. Then, <clears throat> how can we attain it? Uh, how can we practice it? See it as it is, that's all. See any mental process or physical process as it is at the moment of uh, its arising. <clears throat> Then, when we are able to observe any mental states or emotional states attentively and effectively, then the note I doesn't have any reaction to the object. You know that? Yes. When we are able to observe any mental process or physical process attentively and effectively, 
then the note in mind doesn't have any reaction to the object. Say, suppose we have the anger. Because we don't know the anger is a mental process of what which should be observed. Then we stay with it. Sometimes they enjoy it. Then the anger becomes stronger. Then the anger <coughs> changes into actions, bodily actions, yeah? physical action. <coughs> then it becomes worse. When we know the anger is a one of a mental states or emotional state which must be observed, then we observe it. Anger, 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 as it is. Anger, 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 anger. Gradually the note in mind becomes more and more powerful because we note it attentively. Energetically, then the anger, the process of the angry mind becomes weak. Then the note in mind, which is more powerful, overwhelms the anger. Then the anger stops. Then the note in mind doesn't react to the anger. It is stay with it. It doesn't react to the anger. If the mind reacts to it, the mind also will be get angry. It doesn't react to the anger because it stay with it. It accept it openly as it is. That's all. So mindfulness. It's called non-reactive awareness. Non-reactive awareness. It's necessary not to react to any object. When the mind doesn't react to the any object, you will be happy with it. If the mind re react to any object, you won't be unhappy with it. There may be some disadvantage. <clears throat> so, not to react to the object, we have to observe it as it is, that's all. Not to react to the object, we have to observe it as it is, or in its true nature. That is a mindfulness of meditation which leads you to the cessation of suffering. You believe? <laughs> <coughs> because you believe in this mindfulness meditation, you come to meditate. Is it right? Yes, whether you believe or not, I don't know, I'm in, I believe in it. <laughs> so, time's up. <clears throat> May you be rightly understand the theory of uh, Vipassana meditation and the meaning of the word Vipassana. Strive your best and achieve the goal, the cessation of the suffering.